All right, check out the chaos of a live garage renovation. So in this garage, it came with some pretty poorly done uh, drywall where it was just fire taped. And uh, I wasn't very pleased with the appearance of it. And uh, for doing hard work in the garage, I didn't think drywall was really the appropriate material either. So there's a few options out there. You can use tin. You can use what I'm using, smart side paneling, which we'll take a closer look here in a second. Or you could use, um, you can buy some kind of plastic sheathing that goes inside the garages too. But it seemed like plastic always changes light in the sun and whatever. So I decided to go with smart side paneling because it literally, it's tougher than nails. When you're trying to drive in siding nails, half of them bend over. Like you can't even get this stuff to accept a nail it's so hard so um when you're if you choose to go this route i would recommend you get a laser and kind of figure out some dimensions around the, the place to turn on the garage door light and uh just try to figure out are your corners actually square or are things plumb what would be a, like a good level line off of the ceiling and what have you. And then I chose to use a one by three strapping after doing the, some of the walls. And there's a reason for that we'll talk about. So I do recommend you get a good like visual kind of stud finder when you're doing this so that you can mark out all of your studs. Like I, when I was doing the uh, strapping on the ceiling, I was getting some peculiar results. But now that I'm like ripping down some of the drywall in here, like I got double studs on 12 inch centers. I got a quad stud back there. You probably can't see it. A quad beam rather for floor joist. So there's a lot going on and you can't really visualize it using one of those stud finders that just shows you the edge. You're, you're always wondering what the heck is between the two edges? Is it all wood? So there's uh, the stud finder I'll put in the description that you can use to kind of visualize what's happening. As part of this, I'm also doing some fire taping and using like a luminescent, is that the right word? Fire caulking where there's been gaps. So this is uh, interior non-water proof uh, fire caulking so you use this so I've been putting it where the uh, beam meets the drywall because before like you could see all the spiders going nuts up there kind of making their webs because the air was going through I'm going to be buying ceiling rated fireproof access doors that goes into my bathroom right there I need that access to a jacuzzi tub so that's important over here, there's uh, ABS pipe. I need it. Ha it was boxed in, kind of over overkill. So what I'm going to be doing is uh, reboxing it in and taping it, and then putting the fire side or the smart side panel over it. But I want to have a uh, way to pump out my RV. So what I'm going to do is put in a TY here and come out of the fire drywall. But you can't just come out of the fire drywall. You need to use a um, a fire collar so that if there's a fire in your garage and you've got an ABS pipe sticking out, the fire is naturally going to go into the ABS and burn down the rest of your house. So these fire collars are rings that you put against the wall and around the pipe. And then as the pipe melts, the collar squeezes over it and prevents uh, any fire from going through the house. So obviously right now I'm kind of exposed, so no welding in here until I get things cleaned up and get it fire taped back again. Then my camera picked me up. Um, so I've got to rebox in these pipes. For whatever reason, whoever boxed in these pipes the last time, they came down two feet and over five feet, like it's crazy, like what the heck? So I need to, I'm going to make a kind of bring these all closer together and uh, make a little bulkhead that's fire protected 
and put a, another fire access door up over there. And then the wires are just laying around up there. Were, nothing was stapled or nothing. I just, I don't know. You have to really wonder sometimes what people are trying to make money, but they really do unusual things and somehow they justify it. <laughs> but anyway, so I'm going to make it right. And uh, as I'm going along, any holes in the drywall, I'm fixing them because uh, like I'm putting a wood as the siding inside the garage. So you want that to be somewhat protected underneath, right? Because if you had a fire, it might start to go through the wood and into the any holes in the drywall. So that's not ideal. I'm putting in some new lighting, which uh, I got these RAB lights. These are kind of tricky. These are 10 volt dimmer lights. If you haven't done that before, read up on it before you get involved in it because you need to run an independent pair of wires from your dimmer up to uh, the light. It's separate from the uh, 120 going into the light. And in my case, I have all Lutron light switches. They're all smart switches. And the Lutron, the level that I have doesn't do 10 volt dimming directly. So I had to buy a special controller to run these lights, which I had to buy and use because they're quite expensive. So keep that in mind if you want to get 10 volt dimming lights. This is about the biggest light you're going to get that's uh, 120, 240 dimming, which is like a one foot by four foot. If you wanted to go to a two foot by four foot, then that would need to be 10 volt dimming. So just keep that in mind. Yeah, I want lots of light in the garage. Um, what else? So I've been using the PVC trim in here. I found that it's pretty easy to ding up. I don't know if I'm happy with that or not. I started using nails when I did this job, but I quickly realized that was a bad idea. So I was nailing into here and then on the inside of the house, I was actually breaking the drywall because the, the drywall wasn't sucked up tight against the studs on the inside. So there, I popped a bunch of screws, which wasn't a big deal because I was actually preparing to paint inside. So I was able to recover. But if I had put this up a month after I did all the painting inside, like I'd be pretty much crying. So I switched to using all screws. So if you can see up there, I'm using, uh, Oh, what are those things called? GRK screws. Can't focus in on there. And uh, I'll try not to go around on about Americans. I'll be polite. But these things are um, instead of Robertson, they're Torx. And that's kind of idiotic. I'll just stop it at that. The world, the Canadian world, is Robertson, which is just a square which is just so much more superior. Um, so yeah, I've been using these little guys, eight and a half by, uh, eight by one and a quarter to go into the one by three strapping. And then depending on what I've been strapping to, you want about an inch and a half of embedment into the uh, two by fours, whatever the framing is inside the wall. So you kind of figure out what you want for screws to mount the, uh, furring into the adjoints and the studs and what have you. So I've been doing that. I'm going to be running a, a new electrical panel in here for my welder and for a compressor and electric cars and everything else in the future. So I'm going to have like a 200 amp sub panel in here and I'm going to run conduit on the walls later. Another thing I've been doing is preparing to use a uh, Unistrut to build a bunch of uh, shelving. So this shelf here, I'm going to rebuild it with a Unistrut and a threaded rod coming down to support the Unistrut. Because uh, this, it takes up a bit too much space and it's kind of in the wrong position. And it, it could be deeper than it is. And I need all the space I can get. Like I'm blessed to have like a garage this big. It's like 22 by 23 or something. But I would like to have more space. So that's why I've been tearing down all this bulkhead. One, I just did a video about it, the garage door and how I'm modifying it. And I'm gonna be coming up on an angle. 
but this bulkhead was in the way, so that's uh, part of when I started tearing into it. Then I found out there's nothing in it, so I'm going to be rebuilding it in a far smaller bulkhead than is up there. Uh, I'm trying to think what else to say. The Jeep has been good. I know a lot of people started watching the video because of the Jeep. And uh, let me take a quick peek at it. Oh. I don't have the uh, thing attached, so it's going without the <laughs> without the door. I didn't know that was an option. There, there it is. We can go with the other. Thing. So there's the Jeep. Can't complain. I did uh, three injector seals on it this year, and uh, aside from that, I think we're, we're pretty good. Just a neighbor's daughter's walking by. I don't want to take a video of her. So that's good. I changed the fuel tank. I did a video on that. And it's been surprisingly good. Like that thing was horrible when I first bought it. I was working on it all the time. But I guess I got to that point where we caught up on stuff. And it's uh, all okay. This bike was stolen last year. I ended up finding the guy and retrieving it. And... Uh, Unfortunately for me, I let the police take it as evidence and uh, it cost me a thousand dollars to buy it back from the the wrecker because they I didn't know that the police don't pay the impound when they take evidence. It ended up being your problem. So it was in the impound for like two months and like I had like six thousand dollars of impound fees on it. So I ended up talking to the impound guys and they ended up giving it back to me for a thousand dollars which sucks because it I beat up on this bike pretty good and it's only worth two thousand dollars now anyway so <laughs> eh, lesson learned I guess I should have just taken it home when uh, I found it it would have been better than calling the police which I wouldn't have expected the surprising thing was that the guy that was riding it was only a few kilometers away from my house, like five minutes from my house. And uh, they changed the chain guard and the rad hoses to blue, which you probably can't see. And he removed the mirrors. And that like was it. it. Like So when he came by, I could hear the bike. I'm like, that's, that's my bike. I can hear it. But it didn't look like my bike. So anyway, he went into a store. And I went and checked it out and I'm like, yeah, this is my bike. I could, there's a few things like this rack that told me it was mine. So I called the police, called 911. They said, uh, unfortunately, this is not an emergency. You call, write down this other number and call us there. And you're kind of like panicking, right? So you're trying to find a pen and write down another phone number. You call it, <laughs> it's the same guy on the other phone number. <laughs> and eventually they came and nothing the guy got away but so be it i got my bike back and uh that's where we are with that the hupmobile not a lot happening there i've been busy working inside the house i've replaced all the interior doors and when you move you kind of got to make the house right first before you start working on your projects again so i've got all the smart side paneling um, I found in this garage that it was only insulated where the wall mates up with the interior of the house. So all the exterior garage walls are uninsulated. You can see I poked a hole in there looking in there. So that's kind of annoying. But uh, I think the smart side paneling is the way to go for me. I'm hoping it's not a big fire burden to have it. But it's super tough. You don't need to paint it. The paint that's on it is incredibly tough. If you were to paint over it, it would never be as strong as whatever is on there currently. So I'm just going to leave it as is and run conduits across where I need to, run compressed air. I've got to find a place to mount my compressor and start building shelving all around the perimeter of the garage so that I can get rid of one of these racks and uh, just get rid of as much stuff that's on the floor as possible. And I should be uh, kind of good to go. So anyway, hopefully you find this video interesting. It's been a while since I made a video, so sorry about that. But uh, thank you for watching.